folks, there's some very interesting reports that are coming out about the Jubilee strategy for dealing with that D-Day, yeah, for dealing with 12th of December 2017. The whole idea is to make a mockery of it, yeah. The idea is that uh, there's president of the Mafisi, <laughs> there's president of Maendeleo ya Wanaume, there's president of so many things in Kenya, yeah, but there's only one president of the Republic of Kenya. So the whole idea is to mock this uh, swearing in of uh, Raila Odinga, yeah, make it look like it's a very petty thing that uh, Kenyans should not even look at twice. And then in the same vein continue to destroy the character of Raila Odinga as somebody who's always hungry for power, yeah, somebody who's disturbing the peace in Kenya, yes, somebody who just wants to cause chaos and uh, make life very difficult for all Kenyans. That's the idea, okay? Now this of course is going to be implemented, you'll be very interested to know the forefront of the implementation of this idea, yeah. According to the information, the 36 bloggers are already very hard at work, okay, to make the right kind of posts in that direction, yes, and to make the kind of posts that will go viral very quickly in the Jubilee fold, yeah, so that it uh, spills over and uh, dominates the social uh, network uh, space. Now, if you look at the uh, newspapers this morning, uh, August, oops, my mind is still in August, wow, uh, December 10th, 2017, you will already see some very interesting articles towards that direction, okay? I'll give you just one example. There's an article about people who uh, swear themselves in as president. Now, I've chosen this article because uh, it, is, it is classic uh, propaganda because if you read the article, it's very factual, yeah, uh, it appears to be very balanced, yes, it's just the kind of thing that can sway your mind, yes, it's not uh, trash, yeah. Now I have a few things to say about this strategy. Number one, uh, we need to take careful of one very important, we need to take note, yeah, of one very important point. One trend we have seen in Jubilee is that uh, they have always had very good counsel, very good advice, which they seem to follow, and then somewhere in the middle they just abandon it, yeah, and go back to the jubilee we know, brutal police brutality, yeah, threats, etc., etc., yeah, wanting to do things Kifua style, yeah. And so having said that, I would not be surprised if this strategy is abandoned uh, right in the middle, okay. Now, very quickly, I just want to digress, uh, because when I say interrupted, uh, I need to tell you who normally interrupts this. There seems to be a very strong corner of advisors uh, who have the president's ear, who are from uh, uh, the Stone Age. All the ideas are from the 60s, okay? Uh, if you read the headlines in the 60s, uh, like one I featured in a video recently, where Mzo, Mze Jomo Kenyatta was quoted as saying, I will crush KPU. Eh? The headline came from a statement which Jomo Kenyatta made in 1969 in Kisumu in that uh, fateful massacre of 25th October where he told uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, father to Raila eh? Kama wewe unge ukua rafiki yangu ninge kusiaga siaga kama unga yeah? That is, uh, if you are not my friend yeah, I would have just ground you into flour yeah, maize flour. Now maize is very hard, so you can imagine the process of grinding it so that it becomes fine flour. You know, small, small specks, small, small pieces. Yeah, yeah. This Stone Age advisors uh, come from that background, okay, and uh, they always seem to have sway because when uh, the Jubilee government implements something that is not working as quickly as they want it to work, because surely when you uh, uh, when you implement the strategy I've just talked about, you need to give it a little of a little time to filter and uh, start giving some sort of effect. And anyway, uh, a successful propaganda or PR campaign uh, sh uh, should not always be 100% successful. Yeah, you expect it at least to have an impact. If you have an impact of 40, 30%, that's good. It's a beginning. Then you can move on. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> no, Jubilee want uh, Jubilee wants quick fixes. Yeah. Uh, the election has ended, let's end political debate, let's move on. Eh? Quick, quick fixes. Which at this moment in time, 
are disastrous for the country called Kenya. Disastrous. And some of the people in this advisory team are people who cannot be fired as advisors. Okay, let me just leave it at that. I'm sure you can figure it out. But that this whole scenario presents a very, very scary, scary, very, very scary preposition. Yeah, and that is, it is possible that all this crisis that the country has entered into, yeah, uh, could be the fault of a handful of people. Can you just imagine that? That to me is just mind-boggling. Anyway, in my view, I think there's a very high possibility that this particular strategy could be abandoned yeah, like that. Yeah, it has happened many times before. Yeah, and I see no reason why it should not happen again. The last very important point I would like to bring forth is that uh, it seems that the Jubilee government cannot be able to run a government without spinning without propaganda yes this is the game they've been playing since 2013 okay and they know no other political game i think that is coming out very clearly now all over the world uh, political leaders presidents and so on normally have a very powerful uh, pr uh, unit yes so that uh, it highlights the achievements it highlights uh, what they want to do yeah these are useful uh, um, arms of, uh, or rather the useful units in any presidency anywhere in the world but when you rely too much on the PR and when that PR crosses the line and becomes propaganda outright untruthfulness outright misleading then uh, one asks themselves when will the propaganda stop and the governing start yeah in fact you'd uh, I, I would uh, dare add that uh, what has happened to the Jubilee government is that they've never known when to stop the propaganda at all. They have never governed. Yeah? Because if you're governing a country, if you're leading a country, then uh, people need to look to you for direction. And whatever the crisis, one needs some sort of humility, one needs some sort of state, statesmanship to step in yeah, and say, okay guys, cool down, we have a problem here. Yeah? Uh, we, as the people with the responsibility for this country, do not want this country to burn. Therefore, let us just sit down and discuss this. Now, this is something that should have happened a very, very long time ago, like beginning of this year. Okay, it never happened. And even now, when we are the, when we are very close to the abyss, yeah, the country is almost uh, going to a very dark, dark place. Yeah. Uh, there's still no leadership, okay? Only propaganda. The propaganda just keeps on being spilled out, spewed out. That and the brutal force, the brutal 60s force, yeah? This is the presidency of the Republic of Kenya. The president of the Republic of Kenya cannot sit down with Ray Odinga. Who is Ray Odinga? He's a nobody. Yeah, that kind of rhetoric. Yeah, it's not statesmanship. It is not the kind of thing one would expect uh, from the leader of any country. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, without any fear or favor, is the crux of our problems in Kenya. It is called tyranny. It is called dictatorship. Yeah, I cannot think of any other way of describing the style of leadership of Jubilee. Okay? And if you check in history, okay, tyranny and dictatorship usually use propaganda very, very heavily. Yeah, look at uh, Adolf Hitler or Herr Hitler, as I like calling him. Yeah, he had a very strong propaganda unit. Yeah, and right through his rulership, he relied very heavily on the propaganda. There was no governing, only the propaganda. Yeah, anyway, after saying all that, personally, uh, my personal point of view is that the strategy which has been put on the table is not workable. Okay. I'm talking about the PR and propaganda strategy of ridiculing uh, Ray Odinga. Okay? And I'll give you only one reason. There are many reasons, but I'll give you only one. The most obvious. That strategy see, uh, clearly tells us that according to Jubilee, the problem is Ray Odinga and Ray Odinga alone. Well, I put it to you, all of us have two eyes. But if you used only one of your eyes, if anybody used just one of their eyes, and they don't even need to open it uh, completely, they just squint, you know, open it kidogo to, 
they'll be able to see very, very clearly that the crisis we have in Kenya is not about Raila Odinga. It is about the long-suffering people of Kenya. Yeah? And while Raila Odinga is the face of that struggle, while Raila Odinga is not being looked up, uh, being looked up to by those Kenyans who want change in our country, yeah, it is not about him. And uh, let me illustrate this by asking a very simple question. Let's assume today Raila Odinga was to announce that he has accepted a plum position in the uh, Jubilee government. What do you think the reaction of Kenyans would be? Okay. Now I know most of you know the answer, but I will answer that fully in the next uh, episode in this series. See you there in a bit. Click on the link on your top left hand corner and you should be there. This is Chris Kumekwicha. Mm -hmm.